So you get a message on LinkedIn and it's from a recruiter and that recruiter says something like, hey Ben, I saw your profile and I got really excited because I think you might be a fit for an opportunity I'm working on. It's going to be a great step up in your career. Are you open to talking? Just so happens you are and you're excited, but should you be? How do you know if this recruiter is actually gonna help you? How do you know if they're well connected or if they have a good relationship with the hiring manager or not? It can be really hard to tell that just from a message or a simple conversation. But in today's video, I'm going to give you four great questions you can ask any third party or agency recruiter to help you identify if working with them makes sense for you. Let's go. Now the reality is working with a recruiter can be a great advantage. A lot of recruiters have good relationships with hiring managers. They've worked with them for years. They have a built up rapport. And by partnering with them, you're skipping an applicant tracking system and you're getting to the actual like, you know, home screen, desktop of a hiring manager. It can be insanely beneficial, but not every recruiter has that established relationship. So the first question you need to ask every single recruiter, third party or agency that you work with when they contact you about the job is how would you describe your relationship with the hiring manager and the company that you've partnered with? That's going to tell you so much. They're either going to be able to say, oh, I have a really good relationship. I've worked with them and blah, 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 blah. Or they're gonna be like, uh, you, you know, I, I, I just started working with them. This is the first role. You're going to be able to tell, unless they are the smoothest liar of all time, generally speaking, you're going to have an idea of whether or not they have a strong relationship and working with them is going to be an asset or perhaps a hindrance. So that's the first question. Now the next question speaks to just how successful they've been at this company and is really relevant to you as a candidate. How many people have you placed at this organization? Now I have clients where we have placed 15, 20, 25 people at that organization. And that's a lot different than if you have never placed someone or you've placed one person. If you placed 10, 15, 20 people at an organization, you have pull, you have relationships. You're now working with people you place there who are probably hiring managers. It is worlds different than working with a recruiter who is brand new to a company. So by asking them how many people they've placed there before, one, it gives you an idea how successful is this person and how successful are they specifically with this company that is incredibly relevant to you if you're going to consider partnering with them. When I first started working out, um, as a, as a recruiter, uh, my boss said to me, Ben, I only want you working on jobs where you're working with the hiring manager. If you're working with a recruiter um, or HR, that's not a good job to work on. Um, why, why did he say that? Well, he said that because it's really important to be working with the decision maker. Um, not that there aren't people who are in internal recruitment and HR that aren't incredibly helpful, but generally speaking, the closer you can get to the hiring manager in terms of submitting candidates, getting feedback, direct communication, um, it's going to make it more quick, uh, more efficient, and you're going to increase the probability that you're gonna be successful. So the third question that I want you to ask every third party or agency recruiter who reaches out to you representing a job they want you to apply for or interview for is do you work directly with the hiring manager, the recruiter or HR or all of the above? Ask them who they're working for. Ask them who they're working with. Um, it is really important. And then ask them, what is the cadence of communication? If they say they're working with the hiring manager, great. How often do you connect with them? If they say they're working with HR, um, say, great. Now, do you only work with HR? Or do you get a chance to communicate with the hiring manager? If they say they're working with a recruiter. Be like, great. Do you work with a recruiter only? Or do you ever work with HR? Do you ever work with the hiring manager? Um, what does your cadence of communication look like? You want to understand these dynamics because these dynamics make all the difference. If they are working directly with a hiring manager and they talk to that hiring manager once a week, every week, that is very different than if they have the relationship where, oh, you know, whenever I have someone, I just send them over and then they give me feedback because that could be a lot of sitting and waiting. You definitely want the first scenario. If you can work with someone who has direct communication and lines of communication with a hiring manager, you're going to make your life easier, you're going to get better feedback, and you're going to increase the likelihood that you actually have an advantage towards getting this job. Now the last question I need you to ask every recruiter, um, third party or agency that you work with, if they wanna represent you to go work for their client is, do you have exclusivity on this search? That is a big deal. When you're a recruiter, you always want exclusivity because the last thing you want is to be looking for one person and you've got two, three, four other recruiters looking for the same person. You're in the same market, you're messaging the same people. Um, it is messy. That's not indicative of a strong relationship. When a recruiter has exclusivity, that means they're working 
just with them. The hiring manager says, Ben, I am only working with you. You and I are gonna work together to identify that person. That is much better than just being represented by one of many recruiters who are working on this. What I've often found is that if a, if a recruiter doesn't have exclusivity and there are a handful of recruiters working on it, the hiring manager isn't overly committed to the process. And maybe that, yeah, we've got all these recruiters on it, but people are applying, we'll see where the person comes from. It is much different than the hiring manager saying, Ben, you and I, we've worked together in the past, you've placed people here, I'm gonna give you exclusivity, I want you to send me people and it's the only candidates I'm going to entertain for filling my role, believe me, when you're going to partner with an agency or third party recruiter and or a headhunter and they don't have exclusivity, that is a whole different world than you working with one who does. So make sure you ask that. If you're watching this video, I wanna thank you for taking the time. If you like this video, please smash that like button. It helps me a ton. It tells YouTube I don't suck. It is free for you, but it's huge for me. Um, and if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And while I still have you here, this video is done, but you should watch this video. This video is really helpful. What it's going to do is it's going to give you a few tips that are gonna make you better than like 98.75% of candidates, probably better than 99% of candidates. But if you watch this video, there's going to be two, three, four takeaways that'll help you um, beat the competition. And when roles are competitive, you're gonna need help.